The controversial bill introduced in California, a proposed state law would add COVID vaccines to the list of vaccinations K through 12th grade students must get to enroll in public or private schools starting next January. The bill would also eliminate personal belief exemptions for students for COVID vaccines and other future vaccines. Sacramento State Senator Richard Pan, who is also a pediatrician, unveiled the bill today during a news conference with teachers in Los Angeles. And Dr. Richard Pan is with us now live. Dr. Pan, welcome to the show. Good to see you. Thank you so much for being here. Um, so we should point out, by the way, that medical exemptions would remain. The personal belief exemption would go away. Why is this so necessary when so many parents say, I want my kids to be able to choose? I want to be able to have the choice when it comes to my kid. What's your case for doing this? Well, thank you for having me here. And uh, parents can choose. They can decide uh, what they wish to do. They can choose not to vaccinate their child. But that decision has consequences. And the consequence isn't to punish the parent who chose not to vaccinate their child. The consequence is to keep the other children in school safe. So we have other children in school who may be immunocompromised. They may have uh, you know, conditions which put them at high risk for COVID. Uh, they may also live in a household where there's people at risk for COVID. You know, maybe one of their relatives has diabetes or some other uh, significant illness or someone has a transplant. Uh, so those families, they deserve the right to know that when they send their child to school, their child will be safe and that when they come home, they're not going to bring a disease that may actually uh, harm or even uh, kill uh, someone in their family. But doctor, we know now with the Omicron variant that the vaccines are not stopping uh, people who have been vaccinated from either getting COVID or spreading COVID. So how is well, that actually true? Well, actually, the vaccine does reduce the chance of transmission uh, when you're uh, fully vaccinated. And certainly vaccines alone uh, are not going to completely stop transmission. That's why we still need to continue other mitigation measures like masks and doing testing and good ventilation. But vaccines are one of the more effective ways. So it's the cornerstone of any effort to try to prevent the spread of COVID in the school. Now, of course, if we could all do our part, we could also reduce the amount of virus that's in our community, and that would certainly help everyone. But certainly we want to be sure that in our schools that we don't have COVID that's spreading frequently in the school uh, system. Okay, so we do have some sound from a local parent who is not happy with this proposal. So let's go ahead and listen to her. Honestly, I can't imagine what the strong push is when you've got a product that shows no appreciable benefit for children. I don't understand why they're pushing it on our children. When also when you see in the state of California where we're just about to have the Super Bowl full of people and yet our children remain masked in their classrooms and two year olds in daycare are masked. I don't understand it at all. OK, what do you say to Jennifer Kennedy there? Really, the question becomes, is there enough data to ensure that a child will not have negative long term side effects from the COVID-19 vaccine, which is a, a novel vaccine? Well, first of all, uh, when she said there's no appreciable benefit to the vaccine, that's just wrong. Uh, there's lots of data to show there's significant benefit to getting vaccinated in terms of the vaccine itself. Uh, given the mechanism of the vaccine, we are uh, the vaccine has gone through all the clinical trials. Uh, it continues to be monitored after uh, approval. So we're constantly monitoring any side effects resulting from the vaccine. Uh, millions of children have already gotten the vaccine, more than millions. Uh, you know, billions of people have gotten the vaccine. And so we have a lot of data on the safety of this vaccine. And we are confident that this is the vaccine's uh, benefits way beyond outweighs the risk. I want to get your take on given that there are already mandated vaccines for chicken pox and polio and MMR, this COVID-19 vaccine would be added to that list. Why do you think that there's just so much pushback? Well, unfortunately, there's a lot of misinformation out there. So, you know, when your uh, guest said that there was no appreciable benefit, um, it, that's wrong. And so one of the questions is, why does she believe there's no appreciable benefit when there's actually a lot of data to show that the vaccine is very beneficial? So 
there's a lot of misinformation out there. Um, and unfortunately, uh, that misinformation is used to scare people from the vaccine, to make them worry about the vaccine. It's important people get accurate information. They should talk to their child's doctor uh, about it. They should talk to uh, sources that have accurate information, like the American Academy of Pediatrics. Uh, that's where you, people should get the information, not from their Facebook feed. How is this fair to kids whose parents don't get them vaccinated? Uh, who may not have a choice in that matter. The parents are making that decision one way or another, and then they end up in homeschool with what we've already found out to be a, a, an inferior educational experience. How is this fair to them? Well, w first of all, um, it, it's not fair when a parent uh, doesn't make the right decision for their child, but it's still the parent's decision to make. The other thing, though, is we also have to think about why is it fair that parents who have children who are at higher risk, who may be immunocompromised, or have people in their household who may be infected with this disease, who are afraid to send their kids to school because the schools aren't safe. Why is it, it's not fair to them. Their rights and their freedoms are being taken away because they cannot send their children to school because they cannot be assured that their child's gonna be safe at school. That's what we need to think about because they didn't have a choice. They didn't have a choice when we allow people to send their kids to school who aren't vaccinated and then there's outbreaks. And those outbreaks, by the way, are closing down schools across the country. COVID outbreaks are doing that. However, in Los Angeles, Los Angeles Unified School District, because they had a vaccine mandate and they were able to get their vaccination rates up, they have not been in a situation where they've had to close any of their schools to in-person learning. So that's a proof that this works. So and we need to think about that. If we get everybody vaccinated, can we take off the masks in schools? Well, as I said, it's a multi-layer approach, right? So the vaccines are one of the more effective ways of limiting transmission, but it, by itself, it may not be enough. So we have to think about all the things we need to do that will allow our kids to be able to be in person, to be able to learn that parents and schools have certainty that they can stay open and that the schools are safe. That's what we need to do. And vaccines are part of that. Do you think that the flu vaccine should be mandated? Why hasn't that been mandated? Well, the flu vaccine is for a different disease and uh, there can certainly be a debate about uh, the flu vaccine, but let's talk about COVID, which has killed over 850,000 Americans already or more, which is more than have died in the Civil War, World War II, uh, when we think about the impact of long COVID, uh, which we're still trying to figure out, and by the way, that affects children as well, uh, it can cause death and long-term disability. This is a disease we need to take seriously. And that's why we really need to think about the fact that we don't want people to get affected with COVID if we can avoid it. Okay, right. uh, we'll leave the conversation right there. State Senator out of Sacramento, Dr. Richard Pan, thank you so much for being with us tonight. Yeah, and come back as the debate continues because I'm sure there will be <laughs> a lot of uh, steps to this as well. This has not yet passed. Uh, it needs to go through a lot of other steps before it gets to the governor's uh, office, and we appreciate you spending time with us tonight. Well, thank you so much for having me. All right. Looking forward to coming back.